Howdy folks, I'm working on a legend. This is a John Deere 318 garden tractor. Whatever you do, don't call it a lawnmower. Unless for some reason you enjoy being pilloried by a mob of rabid tractor enthusiasts. The 318 was built from 1983 until 1992. And despite the fact that the newest example is now pushing 30 years old, they still have a cult-like following. People absolutely love these little tractors, and they were a big hit for John Deere. Which is impressive when you consider that the original cost was almost $6,000, which is equivalent to almost $13,000 today. They're powered by a two-cylinder, horizontally opposed Onan gasoline engine, and a Sunstrand hydrostatic transmission. And along with the hydrostat, you also get hydraulic power steering, a hydraulic lift for the mid-mount deck or the rear mount attachment and the option for remote hydraulic valves that go out to the front or I think also to the rear that could be used for attachments like a snow blade or a front end loader. Some other kind of cool features on these tractors are the independent rear wheel brakes. So they're locked together right now. But you can unlock them and then activate the left or right rear wheel brakes independently. So if you wanted to make a sharp turn, like for example, if you were making a right turn and your front tire was kind of skidding, you could just push the right side brake and it'll spin you right around. If you're in a low traction situation, you can hit the brake for the wheel that's losing traction and send power to the other wheel. Kind of works like having a differential lock. They also all have an electric PTO clutch, which doesn't seem like a big deal now, but it was kind of a novel thing at the time. You didn't have to have this big clunky lever to engage the deck or the snowblower or whatever. The only real problem with these tractors is they're a victim of their own success. Everybody wants to keep theirs running forever, so parts are becoming hard to find. If you can find parts, the prices are outrageous. And then the real insanity is with the attachments. Some of the rarer attachments, like the, the front end loaders especially, they can easily sell for more than the tractor itself. All right, enough chin wagon. This tractor is not mine, it belongs to a customer. It is a 1985 model, just like me. It doesn't run. He wants to see if we can get it running and then evaluate the condition of the engine. He said it doesn't have any spark but he's concerned that the engine may have some some internal problems so let's crank it here i think you'll I think you'll understand what we're talking about and the battery's dead let's try that again Yeah, something sounds like it's catching in there. So I don't I don't know what that is. We're gonna investigate. Well, first things first, I guess let's confirm that there is no spark. These plug wires are they're in pretty sad shape. You see what I'm talking about? And we do not have spark. So this is a waste spark system. So it has one coil for both cylinders. It fires both plugs at the same time. And it wastes the spark on the non-compression cylinder. Pretty standard small engine setup. We gotta find, I believe these have points. We gotta find where that's at. So if I turn the key on, and then I just open and close the points by hand, 
should have a spark and we don't. Okie doke. We appear to have no power to the coil. We got some funkiness going on here with the wiring. So that switch right there, I believe is the PTO switch. It's laying behind the battery. And then somebody has swapped, I think the headlight switch over to the normal PTO switch position. So I don't know. I don't know what's going on with that. We're gonna have to trace that out. I had to relocate the battery. If I turn the key on, this pink wire here should be the ignition feed. And I've got power there. And it goes through an inline fuse holder. And if I look at the outlet side of that, I got nothing. But the fuse is good. Spoiler, I already checked it. Somebody has added this on. Yeah, so we got good. Got power to that side of it. Nothing. All right, let me find another fuse. Okay, let's try this 10 amp fuse. Yeah, that'll do it. Hey, we got clicking and clacking. I hear the hour meter running. Let's see if we got spark. Yeah, it's there. A little bit weak, but it has it. It's trying to run. Sounds fine to me. I wonder if the noise we heard was just from the starter. We're gonna adjust the points gap. I think it might be a little bit, a little bit too big. So I'll just bar the engine over here. I'm on the ring gear of the flywheel. And being a waste spark system, it should close the points once per revolution. See how that looks. Should be about twenty thousandths, I think. Yeah, it's a little loose. That'll work. All right, folks. I don't know what to say. It's not much of a video, I guess. The only problem I found is this glass fuse. Come on. Focus. And visually it looks fine, but for some reason it won't pass any current. I replaced it, and now it runs like a top. Let's see if it'll dry.
fix that. I think the linkage needs to be adjusted. Shouldn't be a big deal. There's a couple other minor problems. I switched the, or I swapped the switches back around. I'm missing the nut for the PTO switch. And the rubber boot here that goes from the cowl to the air box is chewed up. That won't make any difference. I don't see any problems with the linkage. There's no slop in the joints, anything like that. I think we're just going to tweak this turnbuckle a little bit and see what happens. It doesn't creep at all. That's a common problem with these all these hydrostat transmissions. They'll creep forward or reverse when they're supposed to be in neutral. So hopefully by adjusting this we don't affect the creep creep setting. You may hear the the subtle sound of a combine outside. The harvest has begun. Let's see, we probably need to shorten it a little bit. Alright, let's try that. I see the problem. This lever right here is to disengage the transmission so you can push the tractor by hand. And when I lift this linkage up, these two little buttons should pop out. And they're not doing that. So let's see if we can pop them out. Yeah, that one seized right up. This is what I'm talking about, this little button here. So the pressure of the transmission should pop that up. It's like a check valve. And it allows it to freewheel when it's pushed down, but it won't pop back up. So we're gonna take the check valve out, see if we can figure out what's going on. think just come in there like so and we should be able to pop that guy out let me jack around with that for a minute I think we're gonna get it I think that'll work put a new o-ring on the top I don't have the o-ring for the bottom but it looks like it's in pretty good shape. I put the turnbuckle back roughly where it was, so let's try this again. seems like a pretty happy middle ground right there.
Okay, let's go for a joyride. Not as roomy as you might think. What a sweetheart of a tractor. It'll be hard to let this one go back home. Uh, does anyone need any flies? We seem to have a massive surplus. I don't know what's going on. You know what, any other year I would think this was weird, but in 2021, this is a minor plague. Well, it certainly changes the view. All right, folks. I think that's it for the 318. Didn't turn out quite the way I expected. I thought we were going to find some big problems with that Onan engine. And the owner was even talking about doing a repower. Possibly installing a Harbor Freight Predator engine, which I thought would have been kind of cool. But it's probably better that we didn't do that. I can... I can just see the torch-bearing mob of 318 Purists storming the shop. So, I think it worked out for the better. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it, and I'll see you back here for the next one.